This is a spider egg sac, and I'm about to break it open to see what's inside of it. But also in this video, I'm going to discuss what do you ultimately do with this thing, whether you want to keep it or not. Welcome back to Cobweb Castle. My name is Elliot, and today I wanted to build a, a little stand that you can put a spider egg sack in. You know, basically, just a little platform with a stick. I glued some other sticks together. It's just a little holder for an egg sack, and what it'll allow you to do is the egg sack to, to hatch out, and all the spiderlings will come out and start making some web on here and just give you a chance where, being that it's all enclosed, they can't get out. It's a way to observe closely spider egg sac and the little spiderlings. So anyway, I just glued this with hot glue. It's a little uh, dowel. I drilled a hole in it, put a, a, a little twig in the, into it so it's, it's nice and sturdy. And then these are some other little twigs. I just you know cut it with a pair of um, you know, little clippers and just formed it up and um, this is basically what it is. Just a little stand that will hold an egg sack. So pretty simple. Um, I do have a Southern house spider with an egg sack. I noticed it probably about a month ago, maybe a little more than a month. Um, I've hatched out uh, Southern house spider egg sacks before. And it, that's what I've been trying to do is calculate how long does it take for the, the spiderlings to emerge. And I'm about, two months is the time frame that that I've found that it takes. Now, I've tried to do a lot of research into Southern House Spider and there's really not a whole lot out there. So I didn't ever find anyone else that calculated how long does it take. So um, if that's something that you have done, hey, put it in a comment down at the bottom. But anyway, let's take a look at this spider egg sac. Now, what I'll do is I'll bring this this is, uh, this is the prototype model that when I was first coming up with this, has a, a swinging door, but other than that, it's the same thing. It has you know the web area in the front and also a web area in the back. I, I do have a dome that goes over that area, but I, I took it off so that we can look in there. And um, that's another thing. It's another thing that I like about these spiders is that once they have the web established, they don't try to like run away. Um, they like to crawl on the web that they, they made. I think of it like carpet and they like walking on carpet. They have hooks on the bottom of their, on the end of their, each of their legs. And it's very, it's very difficult for the hooks to grab onto something like a smooth surface. So that's, that's how I think about it is, if they, if you were to lay out a carpet on, um, like in the middle of a frozen lake, it's easy to walk on the carpet, but as soon as you try to step on the ice, it's very difficult to walk. So they just, they stay on the carpet, carpeted area. Now, what I'll try to do is kind of chase her. Let me check, Let's see if you can see this. Okay, you should be able to see a little bit there. I can zoom in too. I'll chase her through the hole a little bit, and she's she is carrying her egg sac. She's holding onto it with her mouth, or with her uh, pedipalps, rather. And you should be able to see it there. Okay. So what I'm going to try to do is get it get the egg sac away from her and um, this isn't something that she's really going to want to let go of and you may observe some uh, a little bit of aggressive behavior because they do have a very good motherly instinct so she's holding on to it she don't want to let go and what i may end up having to do is put her in a sandwich bag and see if I can get it away from her that way. So you see here, some more behavior that she's doing. It's it's hard for her to crawl on this, this wood because she doesn't have web built up there. And if you notice her abdomen, I can see that she's releasing web right now. 
see her moving it back and forth. She's putting web. She just puts some down with her feet. Her back, you see her back legs moving right there? So actually, look at there. What she just did was she secured the egg sac to the wall right there. So I'm gonna chase her back. See if I see if I can chase her back to the web area that she already had made. Just gently you know, being real. Okay, so that, look at there. She just made it back to the web that she already has established. And I'll I'll just let her kind of see what she does. She's she's going back to the other side to try to get away. Now I I can't believe I just got that on video. I've never seen one do that before. So you you see what she did. She just secured it up there with a little bit of silk, and there it is. Now, I can gently grab it. I have a, um, you know, a little, this is a little, just a little thin dowel. And actually what I'm gonna do is move this out of the way a little bit. We'll get our little cradle back over here and I'll just put it in here. Um, now I'm kind of looking at it. Let me get a light. Actually, we'll do that. We'll do that once it's in here. What you can do is when they first hatch out, they're kind of like a creamy, um, you know, milk cream color. And as they start to get ready to hatch, they will start to darken up a little bit. So that's one way that you can kind of tell maybe that, hey, things are, things are getting pretty close here. Um, just trying to get this to where you can see it. Okay, so I have, the, I have my macro lens on. I was just trying to get some close footage so you can kind of see what it looks like here. Let me get some lighting. See if that helps at all. And another thing I was gonna try to see is if we can actually get a little view inside. See if you see any, any, uh, we can kind of see what color inside the egg sac is. Now if you see, I mean, you may, if they're already hatched out inside of there, you may be able to see some movement or, you know, some darkness. So I don't know. I mean, I don't want to damage this one, but we could I don't know, break a little hole into it and just kind of look inside. I think as far as if I had a spare one, I would I would do it just to look. Um, I don't want to do it with this one because we'll we'll keep track of this one on the channel, and that'll be a, a, another video we can do when it hatches out. As soon as I'll I'll watch it every day, and as soon as I notice that they're starting to hatch out, we'll get some more macro shots like this and um, be able to see what's going on. Just to show you my finger on, it's, you know, it's kind of pliable. It's a very nice kind of fabric that the, that the spider weaves to enclose all the eggs. And it's not necessarily, you know, sticky. It, it, um... It's just like a little bag. It's really neat. Now, I mentioned before that we could open the egg sac to take a look inside if I had a spare one. But since I didn't have a spare one, I, I did notice out on my garage door a brown widow was had a nest. And she had a, a couple of egg sacs here. And that's what I, I went outside here to, to grab these. And we'll bring them back inside and open them up. And, um... Again, if I have if I have widows that make uh, uh, webs around my house, normally I'll go out there and, and um, just remove them. I don't like these making webs all over the place. I mean, they're very um, 
prevalent in the area where I live in, so they're all over the place, and um, I try to get rid of them because I just don't like them with, you know, kids and stuff around, so. So the first thing you'll notice as you try to cut into a widow wet egg sac is that the silk on the outer shell is very dense and difficult to get through. I mean, it's almost like an armor plating, but um, I used... A couple of toothpicks and a, I think even a razor blade to get to get it started cut open but you'll see this first one all these little spiderlings are just about ready to hatch out anyway so this one was probably gonna open on its own here in the next couple days or so but um each of the little spiders are fully formed they're ready to go and um, they'll just make their way around and start making a new web and just carry on the life cycle. Now those there up at the top, that's from the other egg sac, and you can see that those are a little bit less developed than the um, that first egg sac that was open. Now this right here is some footage of a golden silk orb weaver egg sac that I did the same process to. Set it up in the little stand and had it in the little glass dome, and you see they successfully hatched out, and I was able to get some good observations um, nice and close. Now after you're done with this, like the, these golden silk orb weavers, I was able to take this outside. They're native to where I live, and I just released them outside, left the glass off, and they all crawled away. Now this brown widow egg sac right there, this is um, going down the drain with some hot water, and um, flip the flip the switch a few times to dispose of it. So you just have to be cognizant of is the species native to your area or not you definitely do not want to release anything that's not native in your area but um that was pretty neat so that does it for a spider egg sac stand and i hope you enjoyed this video again this is a good project you can do in a classroom or if you're a homeschooler or just uh, if you enjoy uh, spiders and um follow the channel i'm definitely going to observe this southern house spider egg sac as it's developing and as soon as it hatches out like i said i'll get some macro shots and, sh and um, show you as they are um, emerging so um anyway thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next video